Hi everyone, welcome to real project terminology that we regularly use in our day to day projects when we are working on any technology in the enterprise application development. Every software engineer knows about all these technologies, but those who are not working in IT industry and those who are looking to get into uh, IT industry as a software engineer, if you know about all this terminology, this is going to help you a lot. So we have identified the 33 technical terms which one should be aware of if you wanted to become a software engineer. And now in the last four sessions, we have covered about almost 20 technical terms out of all these 33. And today we are going to focus on the remaining technical terms. So most probably we should be able to do up to like from 21 to 26. So these six topics we are going to cover today in today's video. So watching today's video, you'll be able to understand what are server environment, what is unit testing, test case review, peer review, defects, defect management tools, defect status, defect tracking, all this information you're going to get now. And myself Harsha, I'm a Pega trainer at Harsha Trainings. Let's go ahead and have a look at what are these terms that we regularly use in our projects. Okay, now let me go ahead and start looking at servers and server environments. See, if someone is going to ask you, suppose if you're working in a software project, so what are the server environments that you have in your organize in your project? See, for every project that you're going to work on, irrespective of the technologies, for every technology in enterprise application development, definitely there will be different server environments. Let me tell you an example. Let's take the example of Amazon application. See the Amazon application which we are accessing like I am going to open a browser and use www.amazon.in I will be getting the Amazon website displayed. So I will be accessing the Amazon application from here and I am going to purchase the products and all. So Amazon application should have been developed and it should, it should have been installed on a server right and that server is said to be live server. What do you call that server? live server or you may say that it is a production server. So any of these two terminology may be used production server or live server. So let me go ahead and take the board. The Amazon application which we are accessing from the live server it would have been developed by some developers. Okay there will be some developers who are going to work on the respective technologies and they would have developed Amazon application. But the Amazon application will not be developed on the same server which we are accessing means it will not be developed on live server. See for development there will be a separate machine. So the servers will be like so there will be four servers like server 1 this is development server and server 2 this is called QA server server 3 this is called UAT and server 4 this is called live server. So Amazon application the application development. So this is development server dev server this is QA server and this is UAT server and this is live or you may say it like production server, prod server. See in some organizations or with some clients there may be post production server also. Okay. And now here dev means development, QA means quality assurance or quality analysis. You can say anything. And UAT means user acceptance testing, user acceptance testing server and live or production server. See Amazon application development will be done here. So application will be developed on development server. See after application development is done here, it will be unit tested by the developer. I will tell you in the next uh, after some time what is unit testing means. And once it is everything fine, this particular functionalities that they have developed will be moved to QA server. See, this particular server will be accessed by developers, okay, and QA servers will be accessed by testers. This may be called as QA server or testing server. You can say testing server also, but mostly it will be used as terminology QA server. So, testers will log into this server and the application that is being moved here from development to QA. So, they are going to do testing. Once the successful, successfully the testing has been done, the same application will be moved to next level of server called UAT. Again here regression testing will be done. So here also testers will be logging in. So here regression testing will be done. Once the regression testing done here, the application will be moved to live. 
So once everything, once the application is on live, which means that it will be available for end users. So for an Amazon application, common citizens or common people like us are the end users. There will be developers, there will be testers and there will be uh, end users. So developers are going to work on developing the business application on a machine called development server. And once the development is done, unit testing is fine. It will be moved to testing server or QA server. Testers will log in and test the application functionalities. Once everything is fine here, the same will be moved to UIT server. Once it is done with the UIT server on regression testing, it will be moved to live. So these are the four different server environments that usually will be there with any enterprise application client. Okay. And there may be post prod server also that is not required now. And coming back to this one. So now let's talk about what is unit testing. What is unit testing? So as I told you already, developers are going to develop the application on development server. After the development has been done, they are going to unit test the application. In the unit testing, the functionalities, whatever that they have implemented, they are going to test for the functional execution, whether the functional execution is fine or not. So they will be writing some test cases. They will be writing some test cases, means with different inputs, what is the output? All these test cases will be recorded by the developers when they do unit testing. Once they find the functionality is working fine, it will be moved to QA and QA people, they will also write some test cases of their own. Okay. So all the test cases that are being tested by developer will also be submitted to the QA, but QA people don't use the same test cases. QA people write more better test cases than the developers and they are going to test it everything. So like this, unit testing will be done by the developers. QA people will be testing for the quality of the application. Okay, so next let's go ahead and see this one. So look at here, uh, the next one is test case review. Means the test cases that are being written, the test cases th that are being written by the developers here. Okay, all these will be reviewed. Who will review this? It will be reviewed by either your colleague or maybe by your team lead or tech lead. So that is also called as test case peer review. It is not only test cases. And they will also be uh, reviewing your code that you have developed. Code in the sense, the functionalities that you have developed, whether that is working fine with respect to the test cases you are re, uh, you, you have done. So once you are done with your unit testing, you will submit these test cases what you have written to your colleague or your team lead. Again, your team lead or your colleague is going to review it, whether you have done proper testing or not. Apart from that, peer review will be done. Peer review in the sense, your colleagues or maybe your team lead is going to look at your functionalities that you have developed, whether those are properly working or not. Apart from that, they are going to see the code that you have developed. See the coding that you have done, whether the coding is going to be done in a proper way, following certain principles that are being defined by the uh, organization. So like that, code review will be done to make sure that there are no coding mistakes, there are no hard coding things and some, some of the things like this, the best, best uh, practices are being followed in while writing the code or not, they are going to verify. So once the peer review is also done and it is approved, then it will be moved to QA environment after the unit testing has been done. And then defects, defect management tool and defect status. What does it mean? See here, when the unit testing has been done, when it has been moved to QA, so QA people are going to do some testing. So this testing here on QA environment, usually it is called as smoke testing. Uh, or it, it, will, it will be like normal testing. Here it is called as regression testing. Anyhow, here also they can do regression testing if they want. But anyhow, here QA people are going to, QA team is going to do testing. At the time when they are testing, if they find there are some, uh, the functionalities are behaving unexpected. Means the expected behavior has not been submitted or done by the developer as an output. So QA people are going to raise this and tell this information to the developers. See, they are not going to directly contact the developer and say this is not working or they are not going to directly send an email saying that this is not working. We need tracking of this. So in order to track all this, they are going to use a separate tool. So that tool is called defect management tool. So for every defect that is going to get raised, the defect has to be recorded in a tool called defect management tool. Usually in our organizations, Jira may be used for a defect management tool, ALM may be used for defect management tool, DMS may be used for defect management tool, 
like this there are different service providers who provide the tools like this where the testers are going to raise a defect like this testers are going to raise a defect so a defect is going to have a defect id generated description description in the sense see what is the issue that they have observed or they have identified that issue details they are going to write and they are going to mention whether it is a severe defect or a minor defect or a major defect like that they are going to mention and defect type defect is related to functionality or defect is related to database or something like that they are going to mention or code defect or unusual defect like that status will be open at the time when they open the status it will be open and this defect will be there should be one more column here like assignee okay assignee in the sense to whom it has been assigned so they will be assigned to rama so rama was been assigned with this defect so now they are going to intimate the same by email defect is automatically email will be sent to the assignee person they don't even need to intimate it actually so now the developer when he receive a defect email developer is going to open the same tool and he will look at the defect message what is the defect and all what are the test cases they have executed and take the test data he will try to reproduce this defect to see the behavior in that development environment in the development environment if the defect is been re reproduced then that is a valid defect now at the time when developer is going to look at it working on it he will change the status from open to in progress in progress so like this he will be changing in progress means he is working on it and it will be on his name if the defect is not been found okay he will contact the he will put the comments here in this defect saying that was not able to reproduce in development please retest or send the screenshots in qa qa people are going so like this this is a defect management tool where there will be a defect status and once the defect is been let's say for example in one case defect is found defect has been fixed in development environment again it will be moved to qa after the review is been done so once the defect is been fixed and resolved they will say this is resolved status will be resolved they'll write in the comments defect has been identified we have fixed and moved suppose defect is not been reproducible they will say that resolved and defect is not reproducible like that they are going to provide the comments okay so like this defect management tool will be used while you are uh, uh, going to do the testing defects will be raised by testers defects will be fixed by developers if it is reproducible otherwise they will close it uh, after getting the confirm after uh, confirming with the qa people that this is not being reproducible at all okay and next level let's have a look at the next one so the next one let me erase all this okay so the next one will be defect and bug fixing i already told you about the defect defect will be worked on to be fixed what is meant by bug fixing this is important see defect difference between defect and bug we need to understand clearly defect is something which has happened because of your development and which has been found before i uh, maybe like during the testing part okay now bug means this is already there in the system no one has identified previously but now it has been identified there is a bug in the system means the functionality behavior is missing but it is not because of the code that you have done now it was there since long back when they are testing now they were able to find out this so this is called as bug so if they are they are finding some bugs also you will have to fix the bugs in the application as a developer if it is related to you okay so this is what we have covered today so we, today we have covered uh, about server environments unit testing test case review peer review defects defect management tool and defect status difference between defect and bug okay and in the next session we are going to look at understanding about staging code retrofit release management implementation plan deployments so up to this we are going to look at okay and after this is been done i'll tell you about developer job versus production support so two more videos we will be uh, doing to cover the rest of the topics in this real time uh, terminology okay so i hope all of you enjoyed watching this video and all of you have got some valuable information about the real time project and the terminology that is been used in the real time and if you have any questions related to 
uh, any technology real time terminology or anything if you wanted to uh, listen back to this any of this which have been covered so far uh, you can uh, say that in the comments and any one of you if you have if you are a fresher or if you have gap after your education or maybe um, you are an employed person in non it company and looking for a job in it industry or you are already employed into it but you are looking for a career growth and if you are if you are looking for any career guidance please post your question related to career guidance in the comment section of this video we would be able to assist you and guide you in a proper way in a right path so friends if you like the content that we are posting don't forget to subscribe our channel like this videos and share this videos with your friends and your within your connections so this is arsha signing off thank you